Hello and welcome back to Moments. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this Select Fire Strife, which I made. The Strife has got some um, tricks up its sleeves, and it, it has a safe mode, where it doesn't do anything. You got a uh, single fire mode, and then full auto. I really like it, and it's part of the solenoid. Um, this blaster is probably the last strife mod I will be doing for the foreseeable future, as I don't really see any more I could do to a strife which would make it any better than it already is here. Yep, yeah. so let's get into the modding. Okay, so I completely got the strife except for the switch switch here. Um, and I put the, my solenoid in the air zone cage. Uh, so now we're gonna do some cutting here and then I will be back with you. Okay, so I've cut it and put the solenoid in place, just screwed uh, it, fastened it here and then put some screws in. I have three screws holding it in place. Seems to work fine because I only had three, so two there and then one below there. Um, and that's just to keep it in place so it doesn't like fall out or anything. Uh, on the other side, you can see how much cutting you have to do here. You basically open up the whole battery tray uh, to make space for it. Although it doesn't actually do much than like 2-3 millimeters. Uh, so unless it was super tight in the battery tray before, this should probably work still. Uh, and then on the other side here, uh, you can see it's a bit cut there and this battery uh, not battery, but like screw post thing is completely gone. Uh, as well as some major cutting here, but this means it fits over. And uh, the solenoid uh, works uh, quite smoothly. Uh, so now we're gonna wire up some switch here in the back. And put a flywheel cage in. I'm gonna change out my old flywheel cage for a um, 41.5 millimeter spacing flywheel cage. Uh, the open flywheel project, the uh, 3D printed ones, because I think that will be good. Yep, yeah. okay, so I'll see you then. Okay, so I glued the switch in place here, uh, and I decided to keep uh, the flywheel cage. We're just gonna screw that in place. Um, and then we're gonna wire up the solenoid. Okay, so I got it wired up. Everything uh, is wired up. This won't fit in quite nicely. Switch works fine. Solenoid works fine. So the only thing left would be really this light fire thing. Okay, so I finished wiring up this thing. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot of things here. So switch here and then pulse generator. It's pretty messy, that's why I have this cover, just solely for covering this up. Uh, so I'm just gonna cover that up, and then we're gonna put that on, and then we have a battery stock here. Yeah. I'm also very happy with how this ended up. The wiring, the XT60 connector, I think I got a good heat shrink on it. Makes it seal very well. And as you can see, there's a lot of space in to this battery cover in the back. And this cable stay in very well. You just tuck them in, and you don't really have to worry about that too much. It's relatively low profile for a stock, although it works well. Uh, but you're not gonna have much resting onto that because it's, yeah, small. Okay, uh, so I just got this drive put together and. Uh, all the electronics onto the switch uh, and then on the other side we we can flip it over and so uh, here we see what used to be the battery cover I've changed out for a slightly slimmer one instead of this uh, very thick and chunky one which I used to have uh, so what I've put in here is uh, a pulse generator and all the extra electronics for the solenoid because that took up quite a lot of space 
it just barely fits in this package here, which is reasonably slim. I, on my 3D program, I cut a hole in this uh, cover uh, so that the switch is able to fit here. Now, it works very nicely, so if you hold it with your right hand, you can use your pinky, uh, which works quite well. It has three positions, semi, uh, off, or safety, and then full auto. And it's very easy to just switch between the three. And, and if you go full auto to semi, it's just a pull. And metal is just so that it doesn't like fire off. Uh, it's quite stable there without any glue, but that's just because of like how tight it is in there. And um, but it works well. Uh, so what is basically I basically done here is pulse generator, which makes bursts of electricity, uh, and that makes the solenoid uh, uh, like repeat fire like full auto. Uh, and. Um, that works very well, although you need to upgrade the spring on the base on a base solenoid because it's just not uh, it's simply not fast enough to do what you want it to do. Um, trigger and everything is the same. This works very well. Initiates quite shortly after pulled, and then I also had to print a battery stock. Um, this was a very nice battery stock which I found. Uh, there are some an extra plate which I have to put on, which I will have put on by the firing test. But in here you can fit a very large battery, even larger than you can fit here. So you don't even uh, necessarily need to do like something like this to want this because uh, even like my big. Uh, uh, really big battery. This is just so much easier to use for that because it has so much more space and It evens it out a bit with the weight So I'm just going to show the pusher a bit Yeah, so you just saw a uh, full auto firing of the solenoid when well, which was when I first got it working which was just really nice and so now I'll just show you how the solenoid looks inside so So that semi-auto you just hold the trigger in and it's extended it when you let go it goes back and then you go back out again so that goes as fast as you want it to. And then if we switch it over to full auto. And that goes quite fast. I'm very happy with how I made all this look. I think it looks very clean with the switch just here. Easy to access and everything. And it's overall a very like clean looking build, I think. Uh, yeah, so we'll get into some firing. Okay, we'll just start with some semi-auto. Next up, some full auto. Yep, yeah, okay. So, this is the final result. I think this performed very well, the blaster. And uh, I'm really happy with this right now. Uh, I just think it's a really neat feature to be able to switch firing mode uh, just on the go, like full auto and semi auto. Uh, this is, doesn't have burst because it doesn't have like any digital component, like any programming on it or anything. It doesn't have like an Arduino board. No board. Uh, which I kind of like, because that's uh, all stuff which is c relatively simple. Uh, it's a lengthy build, it takes a long time to make. Uh, it's a lot of soldering parts and a lot of like tinkering and getting it to work. 
uh, but after you're done it's it's very rewarding and it's a bit bigger uh, than what a normal stripe would be uh, although compared to the modulus system which this uh, mechanism was actually intended for i think it works quite well uh, yeah so i'll put all the links below for what was uh, needed for building this thing yeah uh, there were some links i used wearing diagrams and some 3d prints uh, the ear zone uh, case for the solenoid is really important to have because without it it's very difficult to actually do anything with a stripe or in a, in a solenoid because uh, taping it in is just like not very fun and very finicky anyways i think it ended up well uh full auto works well and i just like solenoid like to having the tactile feedback just feeling that you're actually pressing something and then i'm happy that there's also like this safety feature which just lets you not worry about the power without revving uh, yeah that is very loud as you saw the performance is very good too though and that's why i love the uh, extra torch because those heads don't really tear very well like the tip don't fall off as easily as they can uh, in many of these flywheel blasters but uh, performance is good still got the like battery reader thing there and i'm very happy with this battery stock i'll leave a link to that one below too thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video